remember that this is the silver jubilee of an extraordinary occasion when you scored so many things for our local baseball team. Don't you think that fellow will be heartened to connect more with the institute? What are you doing as an institution is my question. I have asked the same question to my institution. Remember that clapping requires both hands. It is, it is, not, uh, it is not correct to assume that all your alumni on their own will come forward and do something. They would like to, but there have to be mechanisms. Friend of mine, Jagdish, a serial entrepreneur from US, uh, when he saw so many people doing something for IIT Bombay, he wanted to go to Vijayatiya. He went there with Vijay Mukhe, a friend of mine. He saw a dilapidated library building and he said, let me start doing something. He went to the principal and said, I want to give five lakh rupees to revamp this library. And you know what would principal say? You know, we'll have to think about it. We do not know whether we can accept such money from him. He said, thank you very much and told Vijay Mukhe, I'm never again going to return back. So not only you have to do something to attract alumni, but your institution has to set up mechanisms. Why I would put a red carpet? Because it's not five lakh rupees, he's capable of giving five million dollars later. There is no understanding of the what the relationship can build. And I think the primary responsibility is of the institutions to build this relationship first. Uh, without further ado, let me now get some industry perspective on these issues. So I would request uh, uh, our friend again, and uh, I will remind him, of course, that he should give in a fat check, independent of whether they touch base with you or not, because you are an alumnus. And let's have the industry perspective from Arun. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Deepak. It is really great pleasure being back here. Uh, my wife will tell you that I have not talked about anything else uh, except this uh, institute for the last three days, probably. She's almost bored to death now. But uh, it has been a great uh, chance to get back here. Uh, this, uh, just like Sunday, uh, I have not been here for 25 years now. And uh, you guys have given me a great chance. Thank you very much for having me here at all. Thanks. Now, coming down to the point of uh, the, the debate, um, my viewpoint is more from the industry. Uh, from, from the industry, what we see is the fact that out of all the engineers that we come out with in this country, there are only about 25% who get really called into any job. And that's very amazing. The fact that we have such a large number of engineers coming out, but 75% of them don't really get jobs in the industry. Right? You guys might not know it uh, simply because you guys are from, quote unquote, one of the allied uh, institutions and hence most of you will get a job. But there are so many other institutes like uh, Professor Yadav here was talking where people are not even getting a job even after investing in an you know, engineering college. Now, where is that, you know, where, where's the justice there? Uh, should we really be spending money on them? Right? Should we stop? Uh, there are two choices. One is, of course, you go and spend your money wisely on something, or you stop spending money on those 75% and put it back on the 25% so that we get better and better people. Right? But that's not fair. So obviously, we do have to go back to see how do we spend that money right? right? Coming from the industry perspective, why are we taking only 25%? Why not the rest of the 75%? What really happens is the fact that these institutes today, most of them are teaching in a fashion which is very, very theoretical and which has a huge industry lag. There's a huge gap between what the industry really requires of you and what you are taught in, in the colleges. Now that is not in terms of the theoretical piece, it is more in terms of the practical usage of what you do, it is in terms of innovation, it is in terms of all those kind of things where the industry needs you to be doing something practically and not just knowing maths or not know, you know, just knowing physics and so on and so forth. So my viewpoint is the fact that it is not whether we are spending enough money on these elite institutions, but how is the money being spent? Now to come, come back to a couple of ways of doing it better, one of course is to be able to ensure that there's a direct connect between the industry and the academics. Uh, some of them could be through an alumnus kind of board kind of meeting, like uh, Deepak was mentioning, that we could actually have these alumni come in and actually, while doing, making donations, they could actually connect 
as to how the industry and the uh, you know institute should work together in innovation, in research, in other things like that. So these are the more important parts where you have to actually get something happening. And to get that happening, you have to be, first of all, a, a successful institute. Now, uh, I, I don't recollect the speaker's name in the beginning, but he was mentioning the fact that when somebody asked, you know, how many innovations do you have in this, you know, uh, in this college, he said, you can point one. Right? So it is very important that even as students, you also come up with innovations. Make sure you are dragging the industry to you, not just the industry dragging you up. It's both ways. It is a double handshake. You have to be able to make sure that you don't spend your time in laboratories and other things just doing lab work. You're actually thinking out of the box all the time. You should be able to go have a vision for yourself, like Suhas here, who in ninth standard, imagine, in ninth standard he could come up with the fact that he needed to build his own company. We guys are much, much ahead of that ninth standard today. You guys have got a lot more ability to reach out, to, to figure out the knowledge, to figure out the industry. There are lots of lots of people in the industry who are alumni from this place. People who would be willing to give you a hand and teach, you know, even tell you what is good for you to take up. Now, if you can also do that handshake, the two-hand clap, that is when you can actually get this 25% going up to a much higher number to 65%, 75%. And that is when the, you will not, I mean, not only will the industry want to come to you, but they will be forced to come into you because you are the best, right? So just make sure that you are not looking at just passing this certificate, the degree, right? You're not here to pass the degree. You're here to set up the rest of your life. Just make sure that when money is being spent on you in labs, by your parents in, in, in terms of fees, everything else, you are actually looking at what are you going to be in 30 years from now. Without that image in your mind, there is no way you can reach it. You have to have that dream. You have to be able to make sure that you guys are the ones who are going to make it happen. And that is what the industry is looking for. The industry is looking for people who come with their own mind. While Suhas does say we do you know, stunt a lot of innovation, we still are looking for those five or ten Nanda Nilekanis who can actually build their own place. Right? So it is very important that each of you understand that it is not whether the money is being spent in the elite institutions or not, but what are you doing with the money that's being spent? Because once there is a success, even if there is a success in a small institute somewhere deep in Karnataka, there will be people rushing to that place. Because that one guy who made an innovation in that one college would suddenly put that college on the map. So that is what is expected. And once you do that, money will be no, uh, there will be no dearth of money at all. It will just come. Right? That is how the Stanfords, the MITs, the Berkeleys, they all come in that way. Because they did something that was valuable to the industry. So from the industry's viewpoint, my take is that if you people do come up with something that is innovative, do, do show that you have such sparks of brilliance inside sitting here, which I know you have, but you don't use probably, then you will get the industry to come here and then you will not need any more funding, believe me. Uh, to give you an idea on, on, the, on the IT front, I know companies like Cisco, Intel, and all those have huge tie-ups with IITs and other uh, technology institutes, and simply because the students there showed uh, a liking to do a lot more research in those specific areas. It's very easy today. You go onto the internet, you find certain topics which certain uh, you know, uh, people are doing research on. You can write to them. They will be very happy to you know, write, to you, you know, write back to you and understand what you had to do about it. So that is where you need to go first. The first thing is to build a success story for yourself, whether it's this college or any other college across the, uh, the country. That's where you go first. But the second side of things is also obviously from the teaching faculty side of things. From the teaching faculty side of things, you have to really look at, um, I, I think I can, I can pick up an example here, uh, a very long time ago example, I don't know whether it still exists. But PES College, uh, there was the chairman called Jawahar, who came in, who left his job in the US and came in to start uh, you know, running the company, uh, sorry, running the uh, campus and the college. And I remember meeting him about six or seven years ago when he actually said, I'm not here to run a, an organization. I'm here to make sure my customers, who are one, is the industry outside, and two, mainly, is a student on the inside, is actually happy with what he goes out with. 
right? When he says happy, he, it meant that he had this vision that something like, uh, if I remember right, I mean, uh,